welcome and thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. This is going to be a chatty video. I will try to include as much interesting footage as I can. I have also included timestamps, chapters into the description. So if you want to go skipping around to the subject that interests you most, please do so because yes, chatty. But this video for me has been in the making, in my head, I've been anticipating it for over a year now. And I have to film it now because I have the same orchid in two separate setups blooming at the same time so that I can give you my analysis finally close the chapter about this orchid how i came about and drew my conclusions which i will come to once i have discussed everything about a virus because the initial thought process for me the first time this orchid bloomed was this one is virus but since i had it from 2018 up to now there have been certain things i've been watching observing and changing that i want to get into so that we can come up with a conclusion of is it virus or isn't it without using one of those expensive test kits so thank you for being here let's get right into it and talk about viruses and is it possible to determine a virus without using a test kit even though it may take much much longer and still get a definitive answer so seeing as there's more than 25 viruses that have been reported that infect orchids the two most common being cymbidium mosaic virus and odontoglossum ring spot virus the symptoms caused by a particular virus will vary depending on the orchid species the strain of the virus, and the environmental factors such as temperature and light intensity. Orchids infected with a virus may show no visible symptoms. In addition to that, factors such as nutritional imbalance, excess salts, insect or mite infestation, fungal or bacterial disease, or genetic disorders can cause symptoms that resemble virus diseases. So now that we have that out of the way, Let's talk about some symptoms that are frequently associated with virus diseases. Typical symptoms include yellow, brown or black spots or line patterns on foliage with discolored areas that are often a little bit sunken in the tissue. As I do not have valid footage, thank goodness, of these symptoms to show as an example, I encourage you to send me an email with your images if you think you may have something that looks like what I have just described but are not sure whether that is a virus symptom or not. A second set of eyes may help put your mind at rest. So feel free to send me an email with your pictures. So back to the symptoms. The foliage may display brown or yellow rings. That would be the ring spot or a mosaic pattern of yellow or green coloration easier to see if you put a flashlight behind the leaf and then you can identify the different square blocks different colorations that show up in the cell structure but when it comes to blooms they may show brown streaks or color break so color break being the discoloration of flowers usually seen as lighter intensity line patterns but know that some orchids show symptoms of color break from genetic mutations and not because of a virus infection. As I mentioned, unfortunately, virus infections can only be definitively determined when certain tests are undertaken, and these tests are too expensive for me to take into consideration. So, the eye and the history of my orchid, since it has been in my care, will have to do the job to come to some form of conclusion. This is not a fun fact, but a fact nonetheless. An orchid infected with a virus cannot be cured and best practice is to discard diseased plants to avoid any risk of spreading because that is something that can happen by measures of using contaminated tools, not sterilizing tools between attending one orchid to another or pests like aphids and thrips. They can also spread certain viruses and again, not all, but the risk of spreading is there. Now, I don't want to alarm you, but I did have to tell you all of this because when it comes to analyzing my orchid for the past almost four years, the background of what I've been looking for in these four years and the changes that I have made in order to ascertain if I have a virus orchid or not, it is important for you to understand the symptoms that I have been looking for. 
because as I'm not using a test kit, it was important for me to keep all these symptoms in mind as my orchid was showing some funky signs of something is not quite right. So I'm gonna go and take you through the history of this orchid. I got her in 2018 and she was one orchid. This piece right here was attached to this piece in the basket with lava rock. So this is only a basket filled with lava rock. 2018, 2019, I had one orchid and I fertilized her. I got her acclimated. I didn't have any blooms and I used a lot of seaweed because that encourages root growth. This is a neostylus. Having rhynchostylus as a parent, root development for any kind of rhynchostylus in my area is difficult. So lots of seaweed, lots of CalMag, lots of fertilizer because she actually arrived as quite a big orchid. There was a lot around her. Meanwhile, yes, she's grown since then, but to receive something in the mail, I was pretty pleased with what I got. She bloomed for me for the first time in 2020 and she bloomed weird. Weird as in the spike started to come out nicely. I had many more spikes than I do now in 2022, but they grew quite nicely and then they started to twirl and twist at the end and become distorted and weird. To some degree, that tip even died off. The blooms that bloomed were distorted and weird. The color was gorgeous and I thought, okay, here we go. And there's a video about all that as well, but this is the conclusion closing the chapter on this orchid. So I thought, okay, we've got a problem here and I need to assess what is going on. First of all, what I did was decapitate a piece from this orchid and that is the piece you're seeing in a completely different setup. Changed the setup thinking that it wasn't hydrating well enough and for that reason, my spikes started to curl and deform at the end. Figuring that the setup here in my very dry climate needed more water for a neostylus I put her in LECA and self-watering. So now I had an experiment going with regards to access to water. And that was it for that year. So in the next year, I continued with my fertilizing regime and with the water and everything stayed the same, the same kind of seaweed, the same with the cow mag. And I just watched the two setups and how they reacted and who performed the best. 2021 came around and again, Spikes deformed, blooms deformed, but I had a lot more spikes than I have this time around. The next point was to eliminate what is going on with regards to maybe my fertilizer regime. I know my light wasn't a problem because my leaves weren't burning. They had signs of anthocyanin, which is great. It just shows that the orchid is getting the right amount of light. I had plenty of spikes, even though they were deformed. So I had to reassess my fertilizer regime, maybe the hormones of the seaweed I was pumping into this orchid, she didn't like it. My regular Neostylus loose nerid is absolutely fine with the amounts I'm giving it. This one being a loose nerid blue, I had to consider that something else is going on. Hormones, too many hormones, too much seaweed, that can also distort growths, blooms and spikes. So from 2021 to 2022, these two pieces got None of that, which was a huge risk for me. I am not used to not fertilizing my orchids. They didn't get seaweed. They didn't get calcium magnesium. They didn't get fertilizer. Zip, zero, zilch. I made sure to avoid any of that for an entire year. And you can see the result is I have less spikes, but the orchid grew really, really well. She has more fans on this piece. These two fans have grown fabulously without any fertilizer whatsoever. And even down here, there's another spike coming on this fan. So less spikes, that is understandable. Still good growth. I see no deficiencies on this orchid whatsoever. And I see absolutely no sign of any virus with regards to what the foliage is telling me. So when the spike started to develop on this beautiful piece here, I was thrilled to bits because now I was gonna see what was gonna happen. And it started to grow beautifully. Very excited. The buds were starting to open, no bud blast. And then the tip started to deform and I was back at square one. The blooms are much, much bigger, but sepals and petals are combined, conjoined, not separated. So the same symptoms were there, even though I left out all the hormones, 
literally did kind of a radical detox of this orchid down to nothing. So there is no hormone influence here at all. Then I waited for this spike to open in order to compare what is going on. And I have bud blast. I had that in the past as well. This time around, it's because of the fact I'm moving the orchid inside and outside, depending on how much sun I have outside. So the bud blast, I'll take that into consideration this time around because of shifting the orchid. That wasn't concerning me. The deformed blooms, however, as the foliage is not giving me any symptoms of a virus, the deformed blooms made me think. This orchid, in my opinion, has a genetic deformity. And that can happen when two hybrids are overbred. You want too much of one good thing and you keep breeding and keep breeding and then you might get the too much of one thing because these blooms are astounding. Looking past any deformities, the holographic effect of these blooms, it's just beautiful. But yeah, you want too much of one thing and you breed it and breed it and breed it. The imbalance of everything then causes this effect. So I hope that this was interesting because we are very, very quick to determine this is a virus. And it took me almost four years to get to this point where I am convinced my orchid is not virus after going through several steps of change, of considerations, of comparisons and the complete detox of nutrients and supplements to come to the conclusion that thankfully my orchid is not virus, but my orchid has a genetic deformity, which is the lesser of two evils, let's just say. I don't have to discard this orchid. If she were virused, she would go in the bin because it's too risky for the rest of the collection. But in this case, I can keep her, even though she is a little bit like the ugly duckling. I can keep her and enjoy the fragrance and the color of the blooms, even though they are not perfect. Now, it will be interesting to see, and I know this doesn't make sense at all, but in my head, I'm thinking positively. It'll be interesting to see what the first spike on this new fan will do, if it will form properly, or it will also have distorted blooms. My guess is it will have distorted blooms because it is attached to everything. And, you know, a genetic deformity, it's not just going to stop based on the fact that there is a new plant here to the left. But I'm going to think positively. I'm just glad to close the chapter on this orchid. It has puzzled me for a long, long time. I have drawn my conclusions and I'll take a genetic deformity above a virus any day, every day and all days. <laughs> Once again, if you find you have some symptoms that I was describing and you thought, oh my goodness, my orchid has X, Y, Z on its leaves. Take a picture, send it to me by email. Let's have a second look. Virus orchids are not that common unless you have an orchid that has a very, very old hybrid or a parent that is one of those old classic ones, and it is from very, very old stock. The older an orchid is, the more likely it is that they can have a virus. You know, if the hygiene in the nursery or wherever they deflask them, if that is really, really bad, then yes, even newer orchids can have a virus, but it is not really that common a thing that we should be worrying about. But if you have any kind of doubt with regards to what you're seeing on your leaves, or a bloom, send me an image. Let's have a second set of eyes on that and put your mind at rest. Chances are it's a first time bloomer. Chances are it's an environmental thing. It could be too much fertilizer, not enough light, etc. It doesn't have to be a virus. So I'm really hoping that if you're still here, well, thank you very, very much. But I'm really hoping that this chit chat, talk through, walk through about the four years I've had this orchid watching out for the symptoms, adjusting and changing things like the setup and then detoxing the orchid, that you can see my thought process, how I went about analyzing if my orchid is in fact virused or not. In my books, she's not. She's staying, she's my little ugly duckling, but she's pretty in my eyes and I love her. Really appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very, very much. I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful day, of course. I put a condition on that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.